Hey guys, this is Jen. I've uh, done a little bit of coloring there. Um, granted, I am no colorist or whatever you want to call that. Picasso. The camera's giving me a bit of fit right now. But um, I want to show you guys ooh, how to use the scan and cut to cut stuff like this out. And then there's the um, words that are going to go along with it to make a card. Um, but there's the image and as you see there's lots of broken not solid lines and lots of different color changes okay uh, this is one of the unity stamp sets uh, that's primarily all the stamps I use are from unity so let's uh, get started on this okay so to humor all of those that may not follow me or may not have ever watched any of my videos I am going to scan this in and we're going to try a couple of the different types of scans. For those of you that do know me, you know which one I'm going to choose uh, to actually get my effective scan uh, when we go about doing it the correct way. But let's try this. Let's do scan, direct cut. Uh, we'll do the machine. We'll do start, stop there. And it was on the black and gray. And we'll see what this comes out as. Alright, we'll let it work for a little minute here. Let's try to bring you up a little bit more. Bring it in. Hang on. Oh, gosh. Oh, look at all that. Try to bring in a little bit more. Okay. Well, we got a decent one around the heart image, okay, but nothing around the uh, words, okay. And the heart image comes in because of how I've chosen to color it. I actually gave it the solid lines, okay, so that is able to read that. I also have a very limited light source. If you can see there is hardly any light in this room. That is key when you're using the scan and cut. Lots of people will flood the machine with light. I gotta give it so much light so it captures the perfect scan. If you do that, chances are you will mess up your scan. Try to eliminate as much light as you can. Okay? Underst understand. Brother has been in the electronics world a long time and they understand what the scanner needs to capture a good scan so they don't need all that extra light dumped in there okay so technically I could go ahead and cut that if I wanted to follow that line however I don't so I could come in here to this little ugh. we're on an angle so let me back this out see if I can a little better focus there we go let's say I wanted to put something around it if I wanted to put that around it eh, no what about that eh, not really not a fan of that so let's hit the X not really sure what I want to do let's actually I'm gonna increase this and make sure it actually did capture everything yeah, and it actually captured the individual leaves. Good job, scanner. I am duly impressed. Okay, um, but I actually want to put my own spin on it. Um, I may actually throw some light blues and some leading into some whites in the background there. Okay, so let's come back out here. Scan to cut data. Start, stop. And remember, that was the black and gray, not the color. I tend to like the black and gray the best. But remember, you can hit the start stop button 10 different times and get 9, 10 different results. Don't give up on the scan. Keep trying. Our scan and cuts are amazing. Let's see what this brings up. Oh, I'm going to pause. Okay, so this is the first screen that pops up. Here are the three choices that 
the scan and cut gives us. Lots of people get confused with this. Well, here's a good way to understand what they are. This top one, of course, is the outline. If you just want to cut the outline of this image, that is what you will select, that top one. You don't want any inside business going on, so nothing cut from the inside. That is the one that you will select, that top one. This middle one, if I wanted these uh, words all cut out, that is the one I would select because I want inside and outside of the line. I do not want it cutting directly on that line. This middle one, if you remember, handwriting. This middle one is for things such as handwriting. You want outside the lines, not on the line. This one, if you want on the line and everything cut out that is a line, hit that one, okay? So handwriting, no, do not select that one. Let's say this uh, image right here of the butterflies and the hearts and the flowers and all that. If I wanted each individual piece picked out, then I would hit that. No, I do not want that. So let's try this top one and see what we get. It can be a hot mess too. Oh, perfect. So that captured everything. Let's try this one and see what the writing gives us. There we go. There's the writing. May not have captured all of it. Let's try this one. Okay, see that one? It captured lots of the lines, but we don't want that, okay? Let's see this one in the lines. We'll try darkening it. Hit preview. Sometimes that dark and lighten works, sometimes it doesn't. You just have to, again, play around with it and see. That's why our machines are so wonderful. I still have yet to find something I cannot do with my scan and cut, except maybe a few of them are left out. Yep, there's a few, the little tiny words. Okay. Um, but I can't do blacksmithing, cement work, or glass blowing on it. And that's just about it. And trust me. I have tried just about everything. Okay. All right. So that is what we get when we use the different types of scan with this file. Okay. But if I wanted to have a different design around this, if I wanted to create a file and put a file over this, or wanted to create files for these okay I don't want the actual letters cut out I want it all together how could I go about doing that and getting a beautiful card put together with this well I'm gonna show you okay so here's a file that I've created I have a bunch of different stuff on here um, because this file uh, is gotta have all this stuff but for right now what I need is this and this Okay, so I'm going to come in, select everything, pop this and this off. And remember, I can delete all this stuff because I'm not deleting it from the actual file. I'm just deleting it from on screen here. Okay? All right. So, well, crap. How do I know how that is going to cut on here, right? I have no idea. Yeah, we will. We're going to hit this button right here, the background scan. <laughs> We're going to hit start. And that's going to scan it in and allow it to pop up on the screen so that we can see what we're doing. Oops. Sorry, I just kicked the daggum thing. Okay. So now I can drag this and place it over here. Okay. And I can drag this and place it over here. And I really need to find my pointer pen thing.
Yeah, I need to find my little pointer pen. Okay. Just having your fat little paws up there sometimes doesn't work very well. Okay, that one looks okay, and that actually looks okay. So I'm going to okay all the way through it. Now that comes up, so I'm going to set this to a paper depth, which is much like my vinyl, only slightly deeper. So right now I'm looking at it compared to my window, looking out my window, setting my depth. All right. Cut pressure, I'm going to take this down. I was cutting copper. Okay, cut and start. I was actually cutting some really thick copper. And that's one part of what we're going to do next cutting some copper. Okay, so it's cutting. It's looking pretty good. There you see. What I did was I placed the bar and sure cuts a lot and then did the um, object on path effect and that gave it the little detail. So I'm going to let that cut and then let the cloud cut around the uh, words and then we'll see what it looks like, see if I want to add any further color to it. And then we're going to get into doing some um, engraving and cutting some copper. Okay, so let's do the check. That uh, looks good, but might have a little catch on the left side, which is normal for this machine. This is my famous half cup machine. Okay. So let's do the old roll and pop. Okay, so if you see there, it's got a little bit of a hang there. So what I'll do is I'll just come in here and pop it off the back this way. Nobody ever sees the back anyhow. But still, so I could have went a wee bit deeper with the blade depth to capture this. Okay. Alright, so there's that. And let's do the whole roll because I just re this mat. This is a mat I had out of class. So she was tried and true. There we go. So really pretty heart. Okay, so I may come in and add some light blues and stuff like that to kind of give it a sky effect, but I might just leave it alone. I'm not quite sure yet. All right, so I need to come through and pick out the little pieces that are still stuck in here. See those? And then I'll be back. All right, so here we are. We got it all picked out with a toothpick, not a regular pick, and then we have this. So now I'm going to uh, go grab the card and see... <clears throat> what it looks best on, what backing we're going to use, and get it all mounted. But uh, let's try to work with the, uh, what's it called, copper now. Remember, with the heavy uh, copper, if you have sharp edges, use gloves or keep your fingers away. If you slide your finger across this edge, you're going to need stitches, okay? So please keep your fingers away from the edges. Uh, use your brayer if you need to. But here's my heavy tack uh, embossing mat. Okay, but this has a ton of zig put on it because I understand that this media can handle it. Okay, um, but I'm going to take some time. I'm going to sit here and press and hold this so that I know that when I hit this with whatever. Uh, attachment I'm going to use that this is not going to move it's not going to spin it's not going to shift it's not going to get inside my machine and tear my machine up okay so I'm just going to sit here and press and hold until I am comfortable 
with the amount of adhesion between this media and this mat, okay? If there's any part that pops up, if I can hear it uh, losing its tack, I'm not sticking this in my machine. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. My machine is way too valuable to be foolish, okay? Um, there's some people out there that I am not quite sure they feel that same way, okay? Um, but that's all on them, and I don't worry about it. Okay. So I'm going to pause this, actually I'm going to stop this, and I am going to sit here and work with this for a while. A lot of times you'll find if you place your hand like this, the heat from your hand will work through this metal and helps to activate that adhesive even better, okay? Please do not do anything like this on a regular tack mat, okay? This type of metal can easily pop off and zing right into your machine and really make a mess for you okay I'm using it on you know you guys that went to class with me we talked about hanging the semi from the ceiling this is a semi from a ceiling type of mat okay um, that type of thing okay so this is I'm not grabbing it. It's it's a really, really, really tacky mat. So I'm going to pause this and be back. Okay, I have this loaded into my machine. You want this tack high enough so that when it hangs, okay, you will not see that separation. Okay, it has actually almost become one with this mat. And that's what you want. Okay, so now let's come up and take a look at what we're going to be doing. Okay, so let's come on in here. I can hardly see. Come on, silly thing. There we go. <coughs> okay. We're going to select all and tap that one off. And, okay. Now we're going to background scan because we want this to go right on in there. Oh, I'm going to take this out because we're not going to use the standard blade. We're going to use our little engraver. Most definitely. Okay, so there's a picture of our copper in there. And let me grab my engraver. I'm going to pause this. Okay, so here's our file. I just positioned it. I have my engraver in my machine. And in Shortcuts a lot, I have set this to a draw file, but I have also done something else to it, okay? Because inside sure or inside this machine, I have found that a lot of times when you get things this small, the fill function will not work. Okay? So I am going to let this draw out. Okay, whoops, sorry. Ah. There we go. We're starting starting the engrave. Boy, is that beautiful. That is so pretty. Alright, I will come back. You can see how she's doing right there. And again, because this is a heavy tack, this is going to suck up any um, little shavings that may come up. However, or should I say also, make sure that you don't have any fans or anything blowing because you don't want any uh, shavings that may possibly pop up. You don't want those blowing around and getting down into your scanner, okay? You want them to stick to this high tack adhesive, all right? And she's still going and it's just looking beautiful. And this file is all made inside sure cuts a lot. And it's done um, on the brother's skin and cut. Uh, engraving on copper. Beautiful. It is coming out absolutely beautiful, but you see the tiny little flakes there. Now make sure nothing blows on that because those will remain right there. Until I eject this mat, then I can remove those, okay, and put those in a safe place. But right now, no air is blowing, so those will remain right there. 
and I will, once this finishes, you know how the mat, this sets directly over the mat, so I will remove that before I remove my mat. So therefore, no sharp shavings will be anywhere near uh, being left in the actual machine, okay? All right, so we'll let this keep going. It's getting down to business here. This is the name coming in. Um, I know it's really hard to see, um, but with doing the scanning and that, I've removed all the light sources in here. Um, but there, the name is coming out. Oh, come on. I'll come back when you can actually see it, but I want to prove that I'm actually doing this and not fudging it. Um, but it's not actually me doing it. It is the machine doing all of the work. I just created the file. And you can see the, I think, the, yep, the, oh my God, is it beautiful, gosh, is it beautiful. I just love my machines, like, crazy love. I'm so excited, I love this machine. It is finished, and it is absolutely beautiful, okay? And, um, what I do do ahead of time is I take my little hand vacuum, I have a little Dyson hand vac. right over it just like that sorry if that blew your eardrums out okay um i will go directly over that and remove any little crumbs okay now i'm coming up here i'm popping out my embossing tool try not to tap it on anything okay um inspect it and it looks good there's nothing stuck to it okay set that out of the way i'm going to come up hit okay and i will eject my mat all right, so now I get to either figure out if I want to cut um, or figure out the file I want to use to cut this out. I am not quite sure yet. I am just absolutely in love with this file. Okay, okay. First, before I do anything, I want to show you guys something because I am sure that there are a lot of chirping birds out there right now. You're not going to be able to get that off. Yes, you can. You can get anything off your mat. If you use my technique, where you just simply grab a corner, okay, and you start to roll and pop, okay? Rolling and popping will get anything off of any mat, regardless of your tack, okay? Especially this copper. Now, granite, I am being extremely cautious right here because I do not want to have to go to the hospital again about the 50th time this month only this time it would be to get stitches the roll in the pot right now I'm only concerned yep about that piece right there so there we go okay oh and I managed to bend it just awesome Jen okay oh, let's smooth that out right there but again I'm not sure what type of cut that I will use, okay, if I'm going to go around and make a file right close to the edge, so I need to figure out what I'm going to do to cut this out, but as you see, there's no wrinkles in here from pulling it up, all right, this is why I love Zig so much, this is a heavy tack mat where you could hang a semi from the ceiling, for those of you that over stick your mats, they are way too tacky for paper, you might want to keep it for stuff like this. For your metal, for your chipboard, for your uh, leather, okay? I'll get that crease out of there. Not that it's important, though, because it doesn't affect the name. All right, so I will come back when I have decided what the heck I'm going to do with it. Okay, so let's go find what I just did. Okay, so what I did is I went into Sure Cuts a lot. I brought in the, the original image of the name in that design. And then I just went in quick and did a shadow. So I made a shadow layer. So now I need to scan in the actual piece of copper. And I just went ahead and I ripped it so I didn't have that big huge honking piece. And I moved it more towards the center. Okay, so there, there is my image and here is my file. So I'm going to bring it up here, get it close. I'm going to come in here. 
then I'm gonna blow it all the way up because this is the actual cutting file so I need to be as precise as I can with the placement Oops. And it looks like up, up one, over one. Okay. Oh, shoot. Didn't want to exit out of there. It looks like it should be fairly okay. I might want to, I wish we could go back a half. I think that might be too much. I think we're caught in that halfway. Yeah, but you know what? I think that's going to be good enough. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now, when I cut metal this thin, to me it is important not to have my cut pressure high. What I do not want is I do not want that blade, my deep cut blade, because yes, I'm using the deep cut blade even though this material is very thin. What I do not want is I do not want that pressure shoving it, okay? I don't, I want that blade to float, all right? And even though this is a thinner material, it is metal. Therefore, I am gonna make multiple passes through this, all right? Yes, it's a deep cut blade. Yes, it's thin material. I don't care. It's still metal. So I'm going to take my time cutting through this. If I don't, what risk I run is that blade catching and ripping that metal. When that happens, it is inside my machine. I'm going to mess my machine all up. Nope. I don't feel like doing that today. Don't feel like doing it tomorrow either. So take your time. If you don't have time to make multiple cuts, don't cut it. Okay. I'm also going to sit here <clears throat> with my finger on the start stop button because if that starts to make funny noises or take off or do wanky things and I think even being set as low as it was it still might have cut through. Nope. Good. Okay. Good. But did you hear that snapping? That snapping meant, even though it was set to barely poking out, that was still too deep. Let me show you. I wanted to actually switch and have it focus down here, but I didn't have time. Okay. You heard that snap, that snap, snap, snap. I'm going to check my blade tip and make sure it's okay still. This blade was literally set to where it was just barely poking out, to where I could just barely see it. Yep, it's still okay there, still okay there. But as it turns, it snaps because it doesn't float easily through this metal. Yep, some places it got all the way through, some places it didn't. So I'm going to leave it at that same depth and I'm going to hit cut again, okay? With metal, just like I said, I don't care how thin it is. You have to make multiple cuts and you just seen and heard why. This is my deep cut blade, yep, this is thin. You just heard why, because it is heck on your material, or on your blades. Alright, setting it to where you can just barely see it poking out. And we're going to go around again. Make sure it's stuck down really well. Start. Also, if you see that blade take off on uh, something that is not the path, that's because it's set too deep. Ah, you don't hear any snapping. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to take it slightly deeper. This may be a two, three, four different cuts. So I'm going to take it one number deeper. Sit there with your finger on that stop button. Ooh. 
My thumb bumped it. Sorry. Cuts really well on this right side, but not on this left, which is a half cup machine. So, technically, the best position would be all the way down in this corner. But I cannot reposition it now because it's already cutting. So, we'll just deepen it again. I went up a half number this time, leaving my leaving my finger positioned over that start button in case I have to hit that emergency exit. Oh my gosh. And I think this may be the last time because I see it coming up in some spots. Gosh darn it, I keep hitting the stop button accidentally. Okay, so let's see. It's almost, it's all the way through, all the way around here, through here, but it's left not cut right in there. Yeah, you can see. See, it's cut. Oh, sorry. No, you can't see because I got it stuffed in the camera. Sorry, guys. Okay, so it is cut. Minus the point. There we go, there we go. Just be very careful when handling this. Okay. So there's the cuts. Okay, and I bet I can go ahead and keep ripping along this line. Taking a chance, so rip slow. Make sure you're also not bending your design or doing any damage to it. But follow that line carefully. Because it's scored really heavily. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I can't really stop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh goodness gracious me. There we go. A tight curve right there. So I, I shouldn't have to do this and if I was using my 650 upstairs I wouldn't have to because that one doesn't have the half cuts. This is the machine that was out on the road with me so it does it really really bad. Um, I had it fixed and now it's back to doing it again. Not as bad as it was but still noticeable when you're doing fine stuff like this. Okay. Got it out. So, oh, let me focus it. Maybe you could see that, huh? That would be nice. All right, so there it is. Beautiful engraved cutout. Now that I'm going to put on a card. Okay, so actually popping it out of this wasn't hard. Um, and cutting it out of this wasn't actually that difficult but you have to remember even though this is super thin copper I still had to make three cuts with uh, the first setting to where that blade was barely poking out then went around it again slightly deepening my blade each time okay if you set that blade too deep you'll hear that cracking but more than likely it's gonna take off and make its own path okay or <clears throat> It's going to spin that metal and wreak havoc in your machine. All right. Um, metal can often take tons of different cuts where you just set that blade 
ever so slightly deeper each time, okay? Um, when you take a knife and you try to cut through any type of metal, it's really difficult to do, all right? But it is possible. You just have to take uh, time and great patience. All right. Um, I don't know if you guys want to see a card assembly. I can maybe do it, but um, I tend to keep my private things very private um, and don't post them on YouTube. Um, I'm not a person that looks for YouTube views. I look to help people. Um, so I wanted to address these things and also cutting and embossing or engraving metal. And I did all of them. Okay, guys, uh, I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, you can uh, come and find me over at Scan and Cut Canvas and Scal Help on Facebook. But I absolutely love this. Okay, uh, have a great day, guys. Thanks.